All right, so Ryan, uh, you are uh, manager of digital business strategy mm -hmm. uh, for GM as a whole, or or primarily for Altium program vehicles. No, for GM as a whole. Okay, as we move ourselves forward through the, the journey. Okay. Um, to create a ecosystem that our customers are most excited about. Okay, so one of the things that is special about, uh, one of the many things that should be special about the, the new Blazer EV, mm -hmm. this is one of your first vehicles that you're launching um, following the announcement earlier this year that um, on your Ultium EVs going forward, you're not going to have support for um, uh, smartphone projection, so Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Yeah. Um, you've had Android automotive-based systems with Google Automotive Services for a couple of years now on a, a number of vehicles. Yep. But, you know, you, you've gone even deeper on this vehicle. So why don't you give us a walkthrough of the, how you've how the system's been implemented here in the Blazer and and what you know similarly and and the other upcoming EVs and yep. and why you think this is a better solution? Yeah. So yeah, we we started um, that conversation in March, and we talked about the things that are really important to a customer is a deeply integrated solution and really servicing the customer for filling th the needs they have for things like range anxiety and, and many other type of items. So the system is then based on the Android Automotive open source platform. And then from there, we call it Google built-in. We mm -hmm. have three of the main Google apps. We have Google Maps, Google Assistant, and then access to the Google Play Store, which is the ability to have all the variety of apps um, filtered down automotive specific, right? And so as we go through that journey, we're now launching this vehicle. It has the newest hardware. Uh, as you can see, it has this 17.7-inch display and 11-point-inch uh, driver information center. Um, and this is uh, under a new set of hardware. It's extremely fast and crisp from a Zoom perspective and all the things that are necessary to really um, wow the customer. So right now, we actually we're in the San Diego area, and we have a route plan that takes us all the way to Las Vegas. Um, this route um, is actually the first leg is planned for us to arrive at a charging station where the vehicle will precondition itself as it arrives to a fast charger. Um, and it planned this route, and we'll actually probably go through the exercise again real quick, just so we can see it. And then we'll, uh, hey, Google, uh, plan a route to Las Vegas. And so instantaneously it loads, you'll see it pop up for a moment and say that it needs to charge. And then it built in the two charging stops along the way. So that 300 mile trip, we're gonna have to charge two times. That first charge station and second charge station, like I said, will precondition us, allow us to ride into that charger. We can actually get the route details and look at it's picking two different EVgo chargers. Actually get into the real deep specifics about the charger overall. It's within the world's largest thermometer. <laughs> Um, and then I can get the amenities that are nearby it, right? So I can okay. plan, what am I gonna eat while I'm there? Where am I gonna go shop? And then it talks about the capability of the chargers that are there. Uh, in some instances, when the data is shared accordingly from the providers, you can actually get the real-time usage and statistics about them as well. So this is one of those, those spots where we believe the integrated experience to drive that EV adoption is necessary so that people have confidence of where they're going and how they're gonna get there. Um, so when when the system is planning out this route and picking these two particular charging locations, mm -hmm. is it doing it based on looking at um, you know what is the current state of charge of the car um, and you know how long should I how, is it going to tell you how long you should sit at each one of those chargers yeah. before you continue on with your journey so that you get there in the shortest amount of time because obviously you know you could sit there and wait till yep. you get to 100 percent state of charge but that's not usually what you want to do for that's exactly for what it's doing it's, it, it kind of plots a spot to like walk backwards if you okay. will i know i need to end at this spot how far can i get to this point how long do i need to charge between charge stations to get there what type of charger is there what does my charge curve look like what is the elevation to get from point a to point b so we have a vehicle energy model that creates the road segments and the debit to the energy Right, mm -hmm. and then it plots those accordingly. So there's a little back and forth between the, the cloud solution and in vehicle to optimize those, and you can see how quickly that actually comes up with a, a resolution that it, it will, will work. And does Google Maps have terrain information in here as well? Okay, yes, so it does. so it knows you know how much energy you're going to be using on certain stretches of roads. Yep. So it, so it can give you a pr pretty good estimation of how much what your state of charge is going to be at each one of these stops. Not just the road segment itself, but dynamically how much energy would be used in a road segment. For instance, if it's stop and go traffic, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. right? And is there a reason why you couldn't do this, if, you know, using, you know, say, 
for example, even even using Google Maps in Apple CarPlay yep. for somebody who's an iPhone user. Yeah, so that vehicle energy model, which is specific to the vehicle, is not offboarded into a cloud environment, right? Okay. It is it is on the vehicle, and we we don't that's not shared available kind of information outside of the vehicle itself, okay. right? For a variety of reasons. Um, so that is what really deeply integrates into it. And, and some of the other conversations we've had with those that have experienced Super Cruise too, the map experience with Super Cruise allows you to make a decision. Should I take an hour and 10 minute ride um, without Super Cruise or should I go an hour and 15 minutes and do 90% Super Cruise? So within there, you'd have a so choice. So does it give you those options? It gives in, you in those the... options, yeah. So if I was to plot a, a route, this is like um, back to, to where we're staying, for instance, and I look at that, just as it says 50% range and I have different you know options to where I want to go, you know, if I was to stay on the I-5 here a little bit longer, I could get, you know, maybe three to four minutes extra in this case of Super Cruise. And so there'd be a, a little Super Cruise icon with an indicator of how long you would be on the road stretch. And you can make a decision that makes you feel happy. Okay. And what other features are available in this infotainment system um, because of the way that it's been implemented? Yeah. I and mean, one of the core tenets of, of a good infotainment system is the entertainment portion portion of it right and at the moment right we we have the ability to integrate anything that's a bluetooth device so um if you brought your iphone you still wanted to use apple music or, or apple podcast bluetooth is the the way to do that in this case um if you're a spotify user or sirius xm youtube amazon music these all are integrated tightly into the system and you have the ability to go through and grab and as you can see very quickly um what you would want to listen to Okay. And I noticed one of the things um, that, I, that I saw from driving the Blazer a little earlier this afternoon uh, and playing around with the system is uh, one of the modes you've got, one of the display modes is you can actually have the media player Correct. and the map side by side. When I was driving the GMC Canyon last week, which has obviously an earlier version of this system, um, it didn't have that option to, to display yep. both. Um, is that uh, because of the size of the screen, screen in that size. car? Yep. Okay. Yep. Screen size. So as we determine um, the real estate we have, we can do more creative and more interesting mm -hmm. in-depth things. And so the uh, uh, Altium based vehicles, the the Blazer that we're in, the Equinox Silverado EV, all those that are They've coming out. They've got this larger, got almost this larger 18 inch screen. screen. Yeah, right. yeah. So you actually, we're going to do that same thing in the Equinox and the tra uh, Traverse. Okay. Also, the model year 25 um, Tahoe and Suburbans mm -hmm. as well. They're getting this screen set. And so yeah. these type of features are coming to all of that as well. Okay. Yep. And then, of course, in the, in the instrument cluster display here, you know, you can also toggle through a variety of different things. You get your, yep. your ADAS display, your basic vehicle information, charge, and, and even show the, show the map on there. Yep. And then for so those other jobs of texting and creating um, phone calls, right? We still have the phone app. So your phone would integrate in exactly mm -hmm. the same way. Get my recents in here, contacts, et cetera. I can interact with the vehicle in a way to say, hey, Google, text Tim Babbitt. Uh, it was a great job today. Thanks for all your help. So then it allows me to pick all right, there are two specifically the number that I want to use. Mm -hmm. Send Tim a text message. So that's a message to Timothy Babbitt saying, it was a great job today. Thanks for all your help. Ready to send it? Set, send. Sending your message. Right. And so those, those jobs, those tasks, those experiences are completed in a very similar way that we're all used to depending on the environment. So, so even though you don't necessarily have CarPlay if you're an iPhone user, you still have pretty much all the same functionality. The, the the only thing that you're missing is maybe that maybe that familiar CarPlay interface if you're yep. used to driving another vehicle with CarPlay. Yeah, you're really just moving the the interface in the vehicle is really the only difference, and we're replacing that with Google Maps class leading the ability to add in layers like Super Cruise, mm -hmm. add in layers of charging, that route planning confidence, and for those that are, are really insistent on having consumer choice too, we still bring that. You can see the suite of apps that are in here, mm -hmm. also bringing ways to the experience, you know. And then even it gets into the idea of, hey, Amazon Alexa is also here if you're necessary and you need to make that switch. And for those of you that are really, really into, I am a Siri adopter, I really need that, you can still use the Hey Siri command in the vehicle and your phone will respond. So if I need to send grandma a text message, if I need to add eggs to the shopping list, whatever it is, I still can complete those tasks. As well. Okay, so, so users that have become accustomed to connecting their phone over the last several years 
really aren't losing very much with this transition. No, they're not. They're not. They're gaining a lot. Yeah. To be completely honest, as you talk through this, with the apps directly integrated into the vehicle, right? They're crisper. They're smoother. The disconnects are less. Right. We're using the 5G antenna in the vehicle to power the system. That antenna is much stronger than anything that's in any personal device. Right. Okay. And then the great thing about this vehicle specifically is we're coming with these eight year and three year plans. So you get into this vehicle, you use it for three years, you give it to somebody else. They're still connected for navigation and voice assistant through the next five years of that vehicle. Right? Okay. So it's a first rights principle of the success of the vehicle. We yeah. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. All right.